amigos, amigas, muy bienvenidos a esta nueva masterclass donde espero y confío que pueda sacar mucho provecho porque hoy vamos a hablar de una técnica que también a la vez es una forma de vida en las islas del Pacífico que es el Ho'opono Pono. Eh, he encontrado a lo largo de estos muchos años muchísima gente que me afirmaba que ellos sabían practicar Ho'oponopono. Cuando les preguntaba, dime, ¿cómo practicas Ho'oponopono? ¿Qué es para ti el Ho'oponopono? Y me decían básicamente que repetían varias palabras gatillo, entre ellas las famosas te amo, lo siento, gracias y perdóname. Y aunque eso forma parte del Ho'oponopono, repetir palabras gatillo, no es Ho'oponopono. El Ho Oponopono es una filosofía eh, que nació hace miles de años en las islas del Pacífico, en Haití, en Hawái y otras islas. Los Hakunas eran verdaderos maestros que practicaban una filosofía muy profunda basada en el equilibrio emocional y en encontrar la paz entre todos. Y si alguien hacía algo, alguien se tenía que re reunir con el maestro Hakuna para solventar y con el perdón y el amor solucionar el problema que entre las familias hubiera ocurrido. Y el maestro Hakuna pasaba con ellos días, semanas o meses en una choza hasta que no se perdonaran de corazón las dos partes. La filosofía Hakuna es demasiado profunda para que los occidentales pod podamos entenderla. Y una de las últimas cajunas, maestra espiritual, la doctora Morna Shimeona, pues cuando llegó a Estados Unidos vino con la meta de poder traer eh, esa filosofía que a la vez es una técnica de sanación a Occidente. Pero se dio cuenta que los occidentales estamos demasiado programados, que huimos ya de lo religioso, que no estamos preparados para entender ciertos conceptos profundos. Y ella dijo, yo no voy a poder traer mi filosofía que ha sanado a miles de generaciones, a miles de personas de generación en generación, no la voy a poder traer porque es muy profunda. Pero un día la divinidad le habló a Morna Shimeona y le dijo básicamente... Coge esa filosofía, simplifícala para poder llevarla a Occidente y que saque provecho. Por ello, eh, Morna Simeona eh, creó lo que ella bautizó o denominó método Ho'oponopono de autoidentidad. Es decir, el Ho'oponopono está creado por eh, Morna Simeona, pero no es el método real que empleaban los vacunas que como digo, nadie sabría practicarlo porque solo puede eh, hacerse de maestro alumno y dentro de las tribus de las islas del Pacífico. Pero Morna Simeona quiso que se perdiera lo más mínimo de esa filosofía. Lo convirtió al principio en una especie de terapia, pero realmente, como digo, es una forma de vida. Por ello, en esta masterclass quiero poder eh, lograr convencerte, enseñarte que hop o ponopono no es decir te amo, lo siento, gracias, perdóname. Los que dicen eso no hacen más que eh, engañarse, autoengañarse. La filosofía verdadera hop o ponopono nos enseña varias eh, cuestiones importantes. La primera, que tenemos un supraconsciente que sería aquel que está después del subconsciente. En el supraconsciente están todas las memorias de todas las personas que han nacido y que viven ahora y aunque hayan muerto. Con Ho'oponopono, con esta técnica, nos conectamos, digamos, con esas memorias y al estar conectados hay una parte buena y una parte mala. La parte mala es que todo lo que hayan hecho tus antepasados a otros antepasados, eh, en esa memoria, en el supraconsciente, va a repercutir en, vamos a decir, un karma negativo. El juego ponopono se basa en que entiendas que tú eres 100% responsable de lo que pasa en tu vida y si esas memorias siguen ahí, 
sea de tus antepasados o sea que las hayas creado tú, el juego Pono Pono te dice que debes borrar esas memorias. Así que básicamente para empezar a comprender este concepto de juego Pono Pono, hay que entender que tú eres 100% responsable, que la culpa no lo tienen los de fuera, sino que todo está dentro de ti. Entendiendo este principio básico, podrás decir, empiezo a comprender Ho Oponopono. Porque las palabras gatillo, te amo, lo siento, gracias, perdóname, y otras muchas, son ayudantes para borrar esas memorias. Pero el principio se basa en la comprensión y en la conciencia y conciencia de que todo lo que ocurre en tu vida lo has creado tú con memorias erróneas y también algunas cosas que ocurren en tu vida tienen la culpa alguno de tus antepasados y la divinidad te ha elegido a ti para que limpies esas memorias. Bien, así que primer concepto, Ho o Pono Pono es una palabra hawaiana que empleó Morna Simeona para bautizar este método occidental de los jacunas, que significa más o menos arreglar o limpiar o solucionar un error. Bien, con esta base podemos comenzar. En Ho'oponopono, perdón, el Ho'oponopono no se hizo famoso con Morna Simeona. Ella intentó eh, introducirlo, pero fue muy, muy poquito lo que, lo que ella pudo conseguir. Pero sabía que ese principio que ella hizo en Estados Unidos tendría un resultado, aunque no sabía cómo, pero sabía que sí. Porque en Ho'oponopono nunca hay que tener expectativas. Solo hay que confiar en que la divinidad solucionará y limpiará las cosas de la mejor manera. Uno de los primeros alumnos eh, que formó eh, la doctora Len con este nuevo método, perdón, la doctora Morna Simeona, fue el doctor Ikewala Len. El doctor Ikewala Len era un psiquiatra que vivía en Hawái, pero también tenía consultas en Estados Unidos. Y en una de esas visitas a Estados Unidos conoció a Morna Simeona, la que fue después su maestra. Y fue gracias al doctor Len que el Ho o Pono Pono se ha hecho famoso por todo el mundo. ¿Y cómo fue eso? Pues eso fue por algo que ocurrió en un centro psiquiátrico de Hawái. Bien, el doctor Len, como he dicho, era psiquiatra y le enviaron de, del centro psiquiátrico donde él estaba trabajando a un centro psiquiátrico donde no aguantaba casi ningún psiquiatra más de un mes, porque allí en ese centro psiquiátrico estaban albergados un, una centena de enfermos mentales peligrosos, es decir, que habían asesinado, violado, que habían hecho actos delictivos y eran tan peligrosos que estaban atados de pies y manos y creaban tal estrés por sus gritos y demás que eh, no aguantaban mucho tiempo mucha gente allí. Muchos de los médicos cogían la baja casi al mes. Bien, el doctor Len se trasladó allí y sanó a esa centena de enfermos mentales peligrosos. En menos de un año estaban todos dados de alta y en menos de tres años el centro cerró. Pero, ¿Y qué hizo el doctor Len? Eh, habló con, con todos los familiares de esos enfermos psiquiátricos, les dio pautas, les dio una medicación específica. No. El doctor Len nunca vio a esos enfermos psiquiátricos, nunca los vio, nunca habló con ellos, nunca hizo nada con ellos. Fue consciente de que la divinidad le envió a ese lugar porque las memorias de sus antepasados estaban conectadas con las memorias de esos enfermos mentales. Tuvo la conciencia de que eso era así. Por ello, un día y otro día, durante varios meses, el doctor Len lo único que hacía es coger los historiales de esos enfermos los miraba y trabajaba repitiendo varias palabras gatillo, pidiendo perdón por las memorias de sus antepasados que habían hecho que esos enfermos mentales estuvieran así. Es decir, repito, el doctor Len fue consciente de que los antepasados suyos y los antepasados de todos los que estaban ahí, la divinidad los reunió para que el doctor Len sanara esas memorias por fin. Y al sanarlas, sanaría todo el árbol genealógico suyo y el árbol genealógico de cada uno de los enfermos mentales que estaban allí. Mucha gente que ha escuchado esto piensa que es una leyenda urbana. No. Hay datos eh, eh, que corroboran que esto es así y de hecho, al acabar esta masterclass, 
voy a poner una entrevista que le hicieron varios psicólogos y psiquiatras eh, de Estados Unidos al doctor Len, donde vais a conocer al doctor Len y él con su maravillosidad y sencillez va a explicar cómo sanó a aquellos enfermos mentales y va a explicar con más profundidad de la que yo pueda hacerlo que es realmente Ho'oponopono. Es una entrevista que debéis ver sí o sí y que os va a impresionar. Bien, entendiendo que el doctor Len empleó el Ho'oponopono teniendo conciencia y conciencia de que esos enfermos mentales graves los había puesto ahí la divinidad, o llámale Dios o como tú quieras, esto es el principio de Ho'oponopono, la responsabilidad de entender que las cosas que ocurren a veces en nuestra vida, tener una mala pareja, eh, tener un mal jefe, tener problemas judiciales, no son más que memorias de las personas que nos hacen esas cosas. Por lo tanto, lo que deberíamos hacer, lo que debes hacer, es limpiar las memorias tuyas que te unen de tus antepasados con esas personas. Bien, continuamos. Eh... Hay que entender que el Hoponopono es una, debe de ser una forma de vida y por tanto eh, esas personas que van a Hoponopono, que llegan a Hoponopono eh, solo cuando tienen un problema o piensan que haciendo, uh, diciendo estas palabras uh, gatillo que luego os enseñaré, piensan que les puede tocar la lotería, que pueden encontrar un buen trabajo y es que no han entendido nada. Repito, las palabras gatillo te amo, lo siento, gracias, perdóname, y otras muchas que os voy a enseñar, no son ho o pono pono, son ayudantes para herramientas, ayudantes para ayudarnos a limpiar las memorias erróneas de nuestros antepasados y la, las que nosotros podamos estar creando por malas decisiones en esta vida. Bien, por tanto, ho o pono pono tiene que ser una forma de vida en la que cada día seas consciente de que si algo malo está pasando, es tu culpa, hay alguna memoria errónea que tienes que limpiar. Y no hace falta que seas consciente de qué memoria um, o qué has hecho mal, porque el Ho'oponopono no viene a juzgarte. El Ho'oponopono eh, viene a enseñarnos que todos somos uno, todos estamos conectados, por eso lo que tú hagas ahora va a influir en tus hijos y en tus nietos, y lo que han hecho tus abuelos y bisabuelos y tatarabuelos van a influir en tu vida ahora. Es decir, se trata de entender que con el amor y el perdón, que son los dos conceptos más importantes en Hoponopono, el amor y el perdón, tenemos la responsabilidad, estando en esta vida, de limpiar las memorias de nuestros antepasados y también el de preparar unas buenas memorias para nuestros eh, futuros hijos, nietos y bisnietos. Bien, cuando decimos te amo, lo siento, gracias, perdóname, que son, eh, digamos, el mantra principal de Ho'oponopono. Hay otras palabras gatillo, pero estas palabras gatillo, te amo, lo siento, gracias, perdóname, siempre tienen que ir aparejadas a todo lo que hagamos en Ho'oponopono. Vamos a comprender muy bien estas palabras gatillo tan importantes como son te amo, lo siento, gracias, perdóname. Lo siento es una expresión de responsabilidad. Cuando decimos lo siento, reconocemos nuestra conexión con las memorias que requieren sanación y asumimos la responsabilidad de esas memorias. Cuando decimos perdóname, eh, realmente no es solo un perdón hacia los demás, sino también hacia nosotros mismos. Pedir perdón es un acto de humildad y es una expresión de la disposición a liberar esas memorias dañinas que están haciendo que tengamos la vida que no queremos. Cuando decimos gracias, es un acto de gratitud. Ya he explicado en este canal que la gratitud es una energía maravillosa que obra milagros. Al decir gracias reconocemos la sanación en proceso, en el proceso que ya ha comenzado, y expresamos aprecio por esa oportunidad que nos da la divinidad de liberar lo que ya nos sirve en nosotros. Y cuando decimos te amo, que es una palabra que a mí me encanta, 
realmente es una declaración de amor incondicional hacia uno mismo y también hacia los demás y al universo en su conjunto, dado que, como digo, el amor es la fuerza que impulsa la sanación y la reconciliación. Así que este mantra, te amo, lo siento, gracias, perdóname, debería repetirse constantemente todo el tiempo para liberar memorias, porque son las palabras gatillo principales de sanación en Ho'oponopono. Ahora te voy a mostrar otras muchas palabras gatillo para casos concretos, pero aún utilizando estas palabras gatillo que ahora te voy a enseñar, te amo, lo siento, gracias, perdóname, debería repetirla siempre. Pero antes de enseñarte estas palabras gatillo, te voy a enseñar o te voy a mostrar la oración de sanación de Morna Simeona. Morna Simeona creó dentro del método de autoidentidad una oración modelo, vamos a decir así, que debes repetir sobre todo siempre cuando no entiendas por qué está pasando algo en tu vida que te está destrozando la vida. ¿Por qué estoy siempre con deudas? ¿Por qué siempre estoy con problemas judiciales? ¿Por qué me dejan todas las parejas? ¿Por qué me pasan las cosas malas que me pasan? No lo sabes, no lo entiendes. La oración que te voy a enseñar ahora viene a limpiar cualquier memoria que esté causando lo que te esté pasando. Coge eh, boli y papel y apunta. Esta es la oración. Divinidad, padre, madre, hijo, todos uno. Si yo, mi familia o mis antepasados te hemos dañado a ti o a tu familia o a tus antepasados de palabra o de obra, te pedimos perdón humildemente y te pedimos divinidad que transmutes esas memorias erróneas que están causando dolor en mi presente a unas memorias de amor. Gracias, te amo, lo siento, perdóname. Esta oración sobre todo es efectiva y repetirla cuantas veces sientas cuando no sepas qué está ocurriendo en tu vida y por qué están pasando cosas en tu vida. Pero sobre todo tener conciencia de que todo lo que pase es porque hay unas memorias que tienes que sanar. En el momento que digas, no, 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 yo no tengo la culpa, no, no, esto es la culpa de mi gobierno, de mi presidente, de, de mi familia que me educó mal, de mi pareja, de... Entonces ya no estás practicando Hoponopono y aunque digas te amo, lo siento, gracias, perdóname, ya te está saliendo de la línea de Hoponopono que te enseña que cuando algo malo ocurre en tu vida es porque la divinidad te está dando la oportunidad de sanar esas memorias y transformar y mejorar tu vida. ¿Cómo te has quedado? Esa es la verdadera clave de Hoponopono. Ahora te voy a enseñar algunas eh, palabras gatillo que debes repetir en Hoponopono, la clave está en la repetición y en la no expectativa. Es decir, no esperes que ocurra algo y en un tiempo concreto, porque la divinidad, Dios, el poder universal, sabe cómo, cuándo y de qué manera eh, solucionar esos conflictos. Tan solo pon fe y entiende que, aunque las palabras que vas a entender no tienen sentido lógico para tu mente consciente, sí para el supraconsciente. Los maestros jacunas que crearon estas palabras es porque la divinidad les dijo, les dijo que estas palabras tenían una conexión con el supraconsciente. Es decir, vas a decir palabras como gotas de rocío y era así, pero y esta, esto es una estupidez para tu consciente, repito, sí. Pero en Hoponopono las palabras que decimos no son para el consciente, ni siquiera para el subconsciente, son para el supraconsciente que es donde están todas las memorias colectivas. Pero antes de enseñarte estas palabras, gatillo, eh, que tú emplearás las que necesites, pero siempre elijas eh, las palabras que elijas de las que te voy a decir ahora, siempre tienen que ir acompañadas con te amo, lo siento, gracias, perdóname, siempre, siempre. ¿De acuerdo? Y antes te quiero dar otro consejo de Ho'oponopono. El doctor Lem recomienda coger una botella de cristal, de cristal, no de plástico, azul, llenarla de agua y ponerla en un día que haga mucho sol, unas dos o tres horas en una ventana y beber poco a poco ese agua todos los días. El agua azul ayuda a limpiar memorias erróneas. Bien, bueno, 
Ahora vamos, te voy a mostrar una lista de palabras gatillo que debes sentir cuáles vas a necesitar dependiendo del problema que tengas. Puedes utilizar cuantas palabras gatillo sientas, es decir, puedes utilizar una, cinco, diez o todas. Yo he elegido las más potentes, hay muchísimas palabras gatillo en Ho'oponopono, pero como introducción voy a regalarte unas cuantas que he elegido que son muy potentes. Así que apunta y anota. Gotas de rocío. Tienes que repetir gotas de rocío, gotas de rocío, gotas de rocío todo el tiempo si necesitas transformar situaciones negativas que llevan mucho tiempo sin solucionarse. Bien. Siguiente palabra gatilla, gatillo. Fuente perfecta, fuente perfecta, fuente perfecta. Debes repetirla todo el tiempo, continuamente para limpiar memorias y creencias erróneas y sobre todo cuando hay mucha negatividad. Otra, agua de la vida, agua de la vida, agua de la vida. Esta borra las memorias guardadas en nuestro ADN, es muy poderosa para borrar errores que hay en nuestro ADN. Otra, hoja de arce, hoja de arce, hoja de arce. Esta palabra gatillo es para limpiar de tu mente supraconsciente ideas que has formado eh, sobre ti misma o sea, sobre ti mismo que te limitan y te, y te dañan. Esta palabra gatillo busca volver a la perfección natural y que te puedas conectar nuevamente con la abundancia y la divinidad. Chocolate caliente, chocolate caliente, chocolate caliente. Esta palabra gatillo se utiliza para trabajar en las memorias en una persona que quiere tomar ventaja en alguna situación, eh, como por ejemplo en, en una oposición o en un puesto en tu, en tu trabajo o cosas así. Almohada de plumas, almohada de plumas, almohada de plumas es para eliminar y dejar ir pensamientos erróneos mientras duermes. Es decir, esta palabra gatillo se debe decir antes de dormir. Espada de luz, espada de luz, espada de luz. Esta es para, es una herramienta de liberación que nos permite cortar y soltar recuerdos negativos que nos retienen. Debes visualizar espadas de luz e imaginar cómo esas espadas cortan esos lazos invisibles que nos unen a recuerdos del pasado para que esas espadas nos liberen del pasado doloroso. Bien, jugo de naranja, jugo de naranja, jugo de naranja para traer el dinero y la abundancia a nuestra vida. Dinero como arroz, dinero como arroz, dinero como arroz para activar todo lo que tiene que ver con las finanzas. Tarro de miel, tarro de miel, tarro de miel. También para atraer, eh, resolver problemas en lo económico y activar la abundancia, la riqueza y la prosperidad. Colibrí, 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 ese animalito que tanto me encanta. Eh, repetir esta palabra un gatillo es para problemas económicos y para aumentar también la prosperidad. Palmera botella, palmera botella, palmera botella. Para eh, limpiar las memorias eh, que tienen que ver con carencias sobre el dinero. Yo no me merezco el dinero, ser pobre es mejor porque eres honrado, para limpiar esas memorias. Cofre del dinero, cofre del dinero, cofre del dinero, para activar la abundancia y la prosperidad también. Como veis, estoy diciendo muchas palabras de abundancia porque es de lo que más me pedís eh, que os ayude. Flores de primavera, flores de primavera, flores de primavera. Esta palabra gatillo recomendada para momentos de dudas e inseguridad en nuestra vida, eh, sobre todo cuando hay problemas de dinero o no tienes trabajo o te cuesta encontrar trabajo. Tiro del tapón, tiro del tapón, tiro del tapón. Esta es para eliminar apegos y dependencias emocionales. Por ejemplo, dependencias emocionales a la pareja tóxica o a tu padre o a tu madre o a alguien. Papel para moscas, papel para moscas, papel para moscas. Para resolver dificultades de pareja. Pétalos de amor, pétalos de amor, pétalos de amor. Esta palabra activa y potencia el amor de pareja, cuando hay eh, conflictos en la pareja. 
píldora del silencio, píldora del silencio, píldora del silencio. Esta palabra gatillo es para eliminar eh, poco a poco, para sanar todos los conceptos, juicios, memorias o creencias que nos limitan, sobre todo en relación al sexo opuesto. Aquí en España hay mucho machismo y se sigue considerando todavía a la mujer como más débil y demás. Pues esta pido del silencio serviría para limpiar esos, esos conceptos erróneos del sexo opuesto. Color blanco, color blanco, color blanco. Esta palabra gatillo hace que las puertas del amor se abran y ayuda a cerrar procesos dolorosos. Hielo azul, hielo azul, hielo azul. Esta es un analgésico en el Hoponopono para dolores de muela, dolores de cabeza, dolores de espalda. Repetirlo hace que se calmen los dolores. Yo lo he probado y es fantástico. Azul índigo, azul índigo, azul índigo. Esta palabra gatillo es ideal para eh, cuando sufres también, como el anterior, dolencias físicas y pensamientos obsesivos también que no te dejan avanzar. Anestesia para el alma, anestesia para el alma, anestesia para el alma. Esta es para calmar dolor tanto físico como emocional y para seguir adelante en la vida. Ojos de amor, ojos de amor, ojos de amor. Esta palabra es para ver las cosas de una forma correcta, como Dios o la divinidad realmente los ve. Yo soy el yo soy. O también se puede decir yo soy el yo. Aunque a mí me gusta decir yo soy el que yo soy. Esta nos conecta con la divinidad, con, con el ser superior, con Dios directamente. La paz del yo, la paz del yo, la paz del yo nos ayuda a encontrar la paz interior y nos elimina todas las memorias que no nos dejan estar en paz y en tranquilidad. Llama violeta, llama violeta, llama violeta. Nos ayuda a transformar la energía negativa en positiva. Flor de lis, flor de lis, flor de lis. Cuando tengas un problema que no sepa resolver, di. Pongo este problema en la flor de lis. Flor de lis, flor de lis. Hojas de otoño, hojas de otoño, hojas de otoño. Es, eh, se emplea esta palabra gatillo para cualquier vinculación o dependencia que tengas con situaciones o personas. Llave de oro, llave de oro, llave de oro, de oro. Esta palabra gatillo es para conectar con nuestro ser superior y establecer una relación más íntima con lo divino. Aro de oro, aro de oro, aro de oro. Esta palabra gatillo es para traer abundancia y conectar con la energía de Dios y del universo. Fresas y arándanos, fresas y arándanos, fresas y arándanos para eh, todo lo que tiene que ver con pensamientos sobre el sobrepeso eh, la gordura, la obesidad y nos ha, va a ayudar a limpiar y a sanar tanto física como emocionalmente. Balanza de justicia, balanza de justicia, balanza de justicia. Bueno, como ya lo dice la palabra, esta es para ayudarnos a solucionar esos problemas judiciales o legales que no se acaban de solventar por más que contratamos un abogado, otro abogado, hacemos una acción o otra. Bueno, pues este es un listado de palabras gatillo que podéis eh, utilizar las que sintáis que necesitáis, pero a la vez que, eh, que pronunciáis esas palabras, no olvidéis que también tenéis que pronunciar eh, la, las palabras gatillo por excelencia de Hoponopono. Te amo, lo siento, gracias, perdóname. Bueno, esta es una introducción, un inicio a esta masterclass al Hoponopono. Obviamente, entender la filosofía de los Hakunas en una masterclass es imposible. Se necesita mucho tiempo y hacer un curso profundo. Pero, como os he dicho al principio de esta masterclass, creo que la entrevista que vais a escuchar ahora del doctor Kegola Len, que le hicieron hace unos años, en la que explica cómo sanó a esos enfermos mentales sin verlos, va a explicar o a rellenar o os va a hacer entender con más profundidad todo lo que yo os he tratado de decir aquí. Gracias por estar aquí. Nos vemos en un próximo vídeo. Te amo. Lo siento. Gracias. Perdóname. Bendiciones.
And present with me also is Rick Moss, Dr. Rick Moss, and Marvin Greeno. We have some questions. I have some questions of Dr. Hugh Lent. Uh, please tell me how do I pronounce your first name? Is it Heliakala? Is that right? It's E A L E A K A L A. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm wanting to speak with you, especially about uh, some of the ideas that you bring up in the book Zero Limits, written about you by Joe Vitale. And um, perhaps you could start out by explaining a little bit about this idea of 100% responsibility for uh, oneself and uh, a, an entirely different idea of what the self is according to the system that you uh, speak about. Well, I think Shakespeare said it better than I. Um, if you read Sonnet 146, um, Shakespeare says, Poor soul. Um, and, and so Shakespeare is saying, the basic idea is that there are tragedies in our lives because we don't take a look at where the, where the origin of the problem is, and it's always in self. So the tragedy being in life is that we're clueless and we repeat the same thing over and over and over again. And so um, when I work at, Hawaii, for example, when I worked at Hawaii State Hospital, the, um, working with people who killed, raped, and murdered people, I had to ask the question, what is going on in me that I, I'm experiencing this? I'm experiencing a, a patient being violent, I'm experiencing um, staff going crazy, I mean, that sort of stuff. And uh, so having to take 100% responsibility for that. What's going on in me that I'm creating this experience? And so I just do this cleaning, and the cleaning, the Ho'oponopono is about going into the self, and specifically into the subconscious, and where the data is, and since everything is run by information, so the information in my subconscious is saying, is dictating to me what I'm seeing, what I'm experiencing. It's like in Shakespeare's Tempest where oh, Miranda says, oh, woe is me to see what I see, see. So Miranda has this insight that she's only seeing with data. And so, and so it is with me, and so it is with all of you. And so I just work on the data in me that I, that I experience as, quotes the other person. So if I see you as being crazy and goofy, it's only my experience of you. If I erase that, you can't be that way. Not possible. And so that's what I mean to be 100% responsible. Being 100% responsible is taking responsibility for what is going on in you that you experience of whatever. Could I ask you to clarify just a, a little point? You said, what is it in me that is experiencing yeah. this? Yeah. Could you clarify what you mean by experiencing? Do you mean perception? Do you no, mean I don't even mean that. I'm not, I, the perception, perception is not, perception is really a end product or consequence of data playing in the subconscious. So again, coming back to Miranda, Miranda is saying, I only can see what I see because the data is seeing what I see. So Miranda is, is really speaking what Shakespeare said, the mind is but it's just a stage and the data runs around on the stage, and the data is really um, what is going on, and so if the data is such that I'm, say, I'm making, I'm experiencing, I'm suffering, or I'm experiencing people being goofy, then I have to be responsible for that. What's going on in me, and it's simply data playing, and more specifically, memories we're playing in the subconscious. And those can be erased. Mm -hmm. I think that is probably the most profound thing about uh, this whole Ho'oponopono is that you could erase data. Could you give us an example of what it feels like or looks like for data to be erased or is that not something that can be done in this kind of setting? I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking. Could you give us an example of cleaning? I mean, how do we erase the data within our own minds? Well, is that something that could be? Yeah, discussed? of course. Um, it's, it, you can teach it. Trees can do it. Cars can do it. Anybody can do it. Um, but the idea is the most fundamental question one needs to know is the question, who am I? And most people have no idea about who they are and therefore are not 
uh, allow um, the data in them to speak for them as opposed to choosing to not have the data by erasing it. And so um, it's coming back to great sages like Jesus. Jesus said, love your enemies. And the only enemy is the memory plane that you experience as a judgment, anger, resentment, hate, annoyance. And so the whole point is about falling in love with the data and saying to the anger, I love it. Saying to the memory that replays the anger, I love you, thank you for showing up and giving you one more chance to free you. And so the whole point upon it is just simply saying, I love you, thank you. When the data is erased, what is the self that remains? Is it um, a unique self that is God created? Is it individuated or is it just pure self? So, so let, let me come back at you. So I, I would ask you, who's talking? Who's asking the question? Well, that would be the data, and yeah. because the, the other yeah. part of me would know the answer to that. Yeah, but I'm saying since the data is talking, you can erase the data. So I'm saying to people, it, no matter if you have questions, you'll never be able to get at what is going on because the data is running you. And the idea is to get to uh, see, um, uh, we historically have come from this notion that you can decode things. So the Greeks come along and Greeks said, well, let's examine, let's analyze. But the Ho'oponopono is not about examining or analyzing. Ho'oponopono is about letting go of the data. So when the data is erased, you are what Buddha called in the space of void, or what Shakespeare calls you're in the state of, of blank. And it is when you are in that state of emptiness, void, and blank, then this inspiration comes through. What quantum physics called the phantom force of nothing. So it's a state the, of nothingness? I'm sorry? I'm sorry, it's a state of nothingness that you're but You have to really be careful because um, one has to be as precise as possible. No thought? Um, no, no not, not no thought, no data plan. So, so what does that mean to have no data free? That means you're free. You're, you're absolutely free with no data place. And when you, and it's only at freedom, or, or you, I'll use another word, clarity. Clarity is defined as no data playing. No data meaning no memory replaying in the subconscious that one experiences. So let's say you get it, you get the mind back to zero. Is what Jesus called the stone or the foundation. And only on that foundation then can you build something. And then out of that foundation comes the inspiration. And so you are moved by perfect information as opposed to being in dead and using dead information but most of the time we're dead we, 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 without realizing we're stuck in old data and we're dead and the whole Ho'oponopono is about releasing the, the death and the debt so we, we basically have a mortgage in our souls and we don't even know that and we, we, because we're not conscious of it or not even aware of it, we're stuck in it and we, we're just going to suffer. And, and it doesn't have to be so. But you can, you can erase the data back to zero. And at, back at zero, out of nothing comes this phantom force of inspiration. New data. There, brand new. There's so much of um, our operating in the world that depends upon language and thought. So only, you only if you say so. Okay. So you're, in other words, now we're stuck in that data. Because you, you have said something that's just a story, and the data is telling you what to say, and you're stuck. And that means if you're stuck, I'm stuck. Okay. So Let me try to phrase it another way. You cannot phrase it another way. There's no other way you can phrase that. If you're in zero, let me try it another time. <laughs> <laughs> can you be in zero state and have language? Well, you're, you're going to be in zero state and have perfect, you're going to say whatever is perfect and, and right. And everything, in other words, let's say you're at zero, that means the whole world, the whole cosmos becomes zero. That means everything gets enlightened. So, the, so he gets enlightened, the chair gets enlightened. But they don't get enlightened from, from me. They get enlightened directly from the source. And so then the language is perfect. And it's, it's a language in which you're not even aware as to what the, what the artists call inspiration. Like Alston, Van Gogh, or um, 
these great artists just do it. Well, how did you do it? I don't know. I just did it. Yeah. That's the language of love and art. Truth, beauty beyond comprehension. Yeah. If one if one takes responsibility for everything and everyone everything that's going on in that person yes then the idea of free will that each has a will to choose or a decision or to choose for themselves how they want to grow change heal yeah. that would not be a point that you would recognize is that correct well it depends on again we have to be really precise well, I'm going to come back and ask you Please. so when you say free will what does that mean to me it means the right to choose against what is natural the right to hold on to one's programming the right to uh, to um, separate oneself in one mind from source See, what happens is that that at any given moment 11 million bits of information is playing for which you are unconscious of yes so it's driving you so you don't have free will but you have choice the choice is like Shakespeare is saying to be or not to be free of the data mm -hmm. you have that choice but the data is going to run you the only question is what data is going to run you is it going to be inspiration or is it going to be memory which is dead stuff mm -hmm. so that's the choice but you don't one doesn't have free will um, can I can I approach the yeah. question differently because it's not yeah let's talk about the people at Hawaii State Hospital yeah. by changing yourself you you change them because they are part of yourself as the language correct well I think I think what happens is like with you before before I I, I came here I got the address, so I did the cleaning on the address. Um, I did the cleaning on this camera, and on your camera, because I don't know what he took before, and that will interfere with yes. what's going on now. And, and so I'm taking 100% responsibility because peace begins with me. So yes. if I show up and I'm not peaceful, you can't be peaceful yourself. And so I'm only here because only for one purpose, and that is to make a man for whatever. For whatever. Yeah, and I don't know what, the, what, what that whatever is consciously, but there are parts of me that know what that is, and so my job is just to begin the, the being 100% responsible by doing the cleaning. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I don't know what's getting cleaned up. I'm clueless. Um, when... Uh, I get the impression that you uh, make many of your decisions, uh, your actions, based upon uh, petitioning divinity to make a choice a, a, as to to act in one way or in, to act in another way. Is that right? Uh, again, we're going to have to be really precise now. Okay. I, I do the cleaning. That's my job to get back to zero. I want to be free. Okay. That's the, uh, my only purpose for being on this planet is I got garbage. And, um, which is mortgage on my soul and I want to let go of the garbage so I can be free and so at freedom the information comes from the source yeah. but yeah. I won't even know it I, I, won't, I can't say oh I got the information that's not my job my job is just to keep cleaning non-stop and let it, let it unfold however it's going to unfold because 11 million inspirations coming in I'm, I'm not even not even aware of that. So what yeah. is cleaning like? Can you describe what your cleaning process is? Yeah, cleaning is only saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me for whatever data is going on in me that I need to make amends for. Yeah. And so if someone calls you up like me yeah. and says, would you come and speak with us? Yeah. So then what do you do? I clean. And, and then what happens? Well, if, if I clean enough, then we go, oh, okay, it's okay to do it, and I do it. Okay. If I clean and I don't get to do it, I won't do it. And there are many interviewers on which I have not done because I don't get to do it and I'm not making that decision. It's the information in me that's making the decision, and not me. How do you know that? I don't know that. No, I mean, how do you know to come? I don't know that. I just do it. 
and then it says go, and then I tell him it's okay. But I don't, it isn't like a process where you go, oh, I got it. It's something that has to be worked on and cleaned on, and then like a rose, it just begins to unfold, and at some point, you, I just, because I've been doing it for, I don't know, almost three decades, it just, I have it. Sorry. Can I ask a yeah, question please, to that yeah. point? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that it's possible, some people believe they can ask a question and get a yes or no answer? There's psychokinesiology, there's uh, the use of pendulums, things of that nature that allow one to perceive that they're receiving an answer. Do you, do you believe that that's well, possible? Well, but I, I, I want to come back at you again. Please. Um, for me, the only way, the only way, that the reason I, I'm here is for the, only for the purpose of cleaning, okay? That's, I'm clear about that. And so, um, the cleaning, the purpose of the cleaning is, is to free up the data. So I don't know exactly what you're talking about. If I were, if I were to use a pendulum, I would make sure that I would be data free and then and then I would ask mm -hmm. yeah. but but the pendulum if you're if you're not if you're not at zero you'll get funny answers mm -hmm. you know? based upon your own scripts and your and get, ideas uh, I like that but based on, I would be more precise based on memories data in a computer bank yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and so how would you suggest that people begin the enterprise of, of cleaning I, I don't I'm even do that I just do the cleaning myself, and if people want to learn it, they show up. <laughs> yeah, like you. Here yeah. I go. Yeah. So well, I... I for, for example, in, in years ago, I had somebody say to me, convince me that I should take this class. And I said to him, we don't do any marketing. I don't do any of that sort of stuff. I mean, it's a decision of choice that you have to make on your own. I'm not here to make any money. God, if I was here to make money, I'm in the wrong business. Yeah. I've been doing marketing for you up uh, and down the coast. I see. <laughs> Just because yeah. I, I knew it was such a wonderful opportunity yeah. for people to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm still trying to wrap my mind around what the cleaning process is like on an experiential level. Wow. Again, you have data. A data may, ex may uh, I may experience the data as I don't like you. Okay, let's say that data sure. says under my, my in my mind I'm going, oh my god, and I have to put up with this bullshit stuff. Right. Blow up, and I go, oh, I get to clean with that. Right. What's going on in me? Right. And I didn't know I had it. Right. So I can say to that data in me, I love you. Thank you for giving me one more chance to let you go so that I can be free. Right. So the Oponopono is about, about saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And then, uh, the, I'm sorry, please forgive me can be said in a different way. I love you, thank you, blueberries, M&Ms, the whole kit in the blue. Yeah. But the notion is that, that it's my responsibility Totally. So I have nothing to do with you. Right. Yeah. And so you're talking to not the person, but to I'm the talking to myself. Yourself. Yeah. I'm not, and specifically, I'm talking to this inner child in me, who who is suffering because I'm holding on. So the whole point is, you're asking questions, but it's an engagement process. You're, like you say, you're trying to wrap yourself around it. The whole point of is about letting go. Right. It's just let go. Boom. The data goes. And all of a sudden, you get inspiration to do something you never, it never came up for you to do. Right. Yeah. In the uh, introduction to Zero Limits, Joe Vitale talks about programs that go back to the beginning of existence. Yeah. Could you talk a little more about that? Yeah. When, when uh, coming back again to Shakespeare, and um, when we were initially created at the beginning, we were nothing, blank, no data perfect in every way, didn't have to think, didn't have to make money, didn't have to do any of this sort of stuff. So no data playing. And then out of that, out of that no data, which is what, what Buddha called uh, void, up comes this, what Buddha called enlightenment, which is the, the source of the light. And then that source of the light decided, and I don't know 
why and how come I'm, I, and I'm not interested decided to create each one of us and created each one of us infinitely zero so that's how we began and so what does it mean to be infinitely zero it means we experience heaven on earth nirvana art beauty love until something come, came along um, and it it brought darkness Are you in that state of bliss, nirvana? <laughs> if I was in that state, I would not be here oh. sitting with you guys. <laughs> I'm here because I have stuff to, to let go. But clearly you've had a considerable degree of success uh, based upon your having emptied a psychiatric hospital. I don't know what that means, success. Uh, I, assisted, I, assisted in a healing for people? No, I didn't assist. I, I only took care of me. I'm responsible. I'm not, I wasn't interested in them. They, they, were just, they just came along in my life and said, Hello, you got stuff you should let go. I said, Oh, okay. So I'm, I didn't do it for them. They're just mirrors then to yourself? Uh, um, more, in, more, more importantly, more specific, more precisely, they, we had shared, shared memories. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, this notion about healing people is bullshit stuff. I, I didn't do that. I'm only here to clean up what was going on in me that kept him goofy, that kept him stuck in the hospital. That's that's what I came. I came along to do that, to do it on me, not them. And if they benefit, okay. But I, that wasn't my that wasn't my orientation. That wasn't my focus. My focus was to be free. Hmm. Yeah. So anyone who comes in front of you in any way or before or before yeah, you have a relationship with that person I, you on have, some you have shared data and um, yeah. do you feel a sense of compassion towards the people that <laughs> you <love? laughs> you're funny <laughs> what, what does that mean compassion uh, a heartfelt um, connection you want me to be deadly honest with you? Yes, please. It's, it's bullshit stuff. It, it's like when you're free at zero, you have nothing. You're free. You, you're not even in love. You're not, you're not having any of this stuff you hear, the garbage that you hear. You're nothing. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, listen, you know, seek ye first the kingdom, which is nothingness, and you shall see God. That's what I'm interested. I'm interested in seeing the God in you guys. Uh, okay. that, I'm not interested. In, so if I see the God in you, then I'm okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm fine. See, that's the, you're, you're, it's the data. If I can get let go of the data, which is the mortgage on my soul, I get back to zero. Then I'm going to see what Jesus said. I'm going to see God. And nothing but. Yeah, nothing but. And because you guys were already perfect, it was the imperfection of the data in me, not in you. So this notion about saving or clearing out the hospital is, is funny. The whole universe laughs. That, that universe is not interested in saving anybody. The universe is interested in one being 100% responsible. Then the universe will, will, will sing, Hallelujah! <laughs> Yeah. Did that event happen then? That was I'm really sorry? The event that's described in, in the book about you working in the psychiatric hospital. What about it? Did it happen? What happened? Did it ha so happen that you did cleaning on uh, yourself and that those people were well, healed I, and, when and I, I, let, let, let me be really more precise. It's very important to be precise. When I showed up at the hospital, I, it isn't a job I wanted to do. Right. But I had a friend there who said, we, we, we need some help. And I, I said, well, I can do it. Just give me the name of the people. I can do it from wherever. I don't have to be there. Well, um, we can't do it because it's confidential. So I said, okay. And though maybe after a year or two, I finally relinquished and went. And so when I showed up, um, there, all, the, all the seclusion rooms were used. And there were people, um, several people, daily in uh, restraint, physical, uh, that sort of strength. Um, there were, there was, um, 
really verbal and physical violence on the board. So I just did my cleaning. What was going on in me that I'm experiencing? Like the toilets flushing with nobody on them, a shower turning on with nobody, you know. And so I just began the cleaning. And months later, um, without making an effort, the seclusion rooms went. Nobody ended up in the seclusion room. Um, the, the, the violence stopped. Um, whereas it would take several years to turn around time for people to go home, they were going home. Maybe after one, I, I was there about four years. Maybe the turnaround time was three or four months. And so it's essentially, that's what I did, just worked on myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, whereas they didn't have any kind of um, uh, work program, we, we started doing things like uh, making cookies, started out, I don't know, one whole project. Can you imagine, so supposedly, all these crazy people making cookies, yeah? but um, making cookies, polishing shoes, um, washing cars, things that they n- nobody ever thought of doing. And, and I didn't plan it. It just did it. it I didn't go, well, let's see whether we can do something, make a new job. It didn't happen that way. So, um, so what? Yeah. I'm sorry. And then, and then, and then the, no one could leave this unit without a position signature. But maybe, I don't know, a year or two down the road, they were able, we, we were able to have a jogging program, tennis program. Yeah. But I didn't do anything. I just was clean on myself and just kind of watch and then be awed by what God can do. Huh? Oh, wow. I should do more cleaning, huh? Instead of being annoyed and irritable. <laughs> yeah. Certain people would end up on the Certain staff would come on the ward and the ward would go crazy. I would notice that, so I would clean with that. As opposed to, I notice when Mrs. What's her name comes, everybody goes crazy. Oh, what's going on in me when Mrs. What's her name shows up? And the, 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 mm-hmm. Yeah. And does, does this go to past lives, or do you not I, deal with past I, I lives? I don't deal with that source. I, I just deal with memories. What What's going on in me that I'm experiencing this? Yeah. Now, there may be those things, uh, that will come up, uh, but I'm more interested in just targeting what's going on in me data-wise that I'm experiencing you. So if I'm experiencing you, however, 11 million of which I'm not even aware of that I'm experiencing you, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do the cleaning because I'm clueless. Mm-hmm. Absolutely clueless. Yeah. Have you, um, Dr. Hugh, then had the experience of um setting your intention to do cleaning on a situation, say someone who was, uh, within yourself, someone came in front of you who was terminally ill, and you did some cleaning um, yeah. it within yourself, but the person still died. Have you had the experience? I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. This notion about intention, again, is a, is a concept that's just database. That nobody has intentions. This notion, uh, I mean, the people who make a lot of money don't intend to make a lot of money. They just do because there's some data in them that creates it. But, but to claim that, see how good I am, but you look at the financial situation. The people who are so supposedly good wrote all these books while we're finding out there. They were otherwise. So I don't, the, the notion of, of intention is, is foreign to me. I don't know what that means. Okay, uh, maybe I'll use a different word then. If, but uh, have you been in a cir- circumstance? All the time. Where someone makes All the time. And so... All the time. I had a, I just came back from Japan. I had this woman come up to me, and and, and little lady, and beautiful lady. She said, I, I was, I, I had been diagnosed as, as having terminal cancer. I'm going to be dead in three months. And so I just did a cleaning. She came up, she looked at me, she hugged me. I, as I hugged her, I did the cleaning, but... Listen, I'm not God. Sure. But, I mean, I'm not God. I'm not here to save anybody. That's the divinity's job, not mine. Mm-hmm. My job is to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not here to act as God, to say, well, if I clean, I can save you. 
don't do that. Can you tell us more specifically what you did within yourself when that woman with cancer showed up? Yeah. What did you clean within yourself? Yeah. So I said, I, as I was hugging her, I said to the Divine, thank you for giving me this opportunity for this lady to come up so that I can look at myself. What, what's going on in me that I, I, I would like to make amends for? And so I said to the Divine Lady, I'm sorry for whatever is going on in me. And there are specific cleaning tools I use that are unique to me. But basically I'm asking the Divine I'm sorry, please forgive me for whatever is going on in me that this woman should show up in my life experiencing, my experiencing her saying to me, I, I've been diagnosed. Now one of the things I had to work on, because um, uh, I just had to work on this whole judgment about somebody saying that somebody's going to die in three months. Mm -hmm. I had to work on that one. Yeah. And, and again, um, people can't help. If a doctor says, she, you only got three months to live, he can't help it. He, that's the data in him. So now the question is, who's going to, at some point, who's going to start deleting the data? But it's so easy. Yeah. Can we delete all the data? I'm sorry? Can we delete all the data? That's, that's, jo that's a divinity's job, not mine. My job is to appeal, divinity's job is to erase, so I can't say the divinity. Like, occasionally I say, come on, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> did, did Buddha delete, delete, delete all the data as far as you can tell? You, you'll have to talk to Buddha. Mm. So, do you, when you think of enlightened masters on the planet, you don't necessarily think of them with data deleted then, or do you? No. I'm more interested, like, in somebody else. I'm, I'm not interested whether Shakespeare is a, is a, 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 a risen master. I'm more interested in some insights that I could, I could use to get some of these ideas across. For example, Shakespeare's, I think, the notion that poor soul, how does that, you know, poor soul, um, these rebel powers that be arrayed. So Shakespeare's already said, hello, the, the, the sin the, or the error is in the soul. So I go, oh, yeah, I, that's, that's pure. It's not out there someplace. It's a rebel power, what Shakespeare called, for be long, long grievances for long. It's played before, it's going to play again. The tragedy is, we don't know that. That's the tragedy. We don't know that the data runs us. That's the tragedy. And so we're going to repeat it over and yes. over and over. Have you reached a point in your own evolution where you can see where the data runs you and where you are clear? Uh, sometimes, but rarely. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm more, I'm more interested in keeping the cleaning going nonstop. I, I don't go that route. I'm, 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 because I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely clear in my soul that the divinity has given me one more chance to do, to make amends for whatever is going on in me. So I'm clear that my only purpose for existence is to free myself. So I can be free and once more be in line with the, the light and be in a light and so yeah. Do you have um, an experience at times? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Do you have an experience at times of feeling like like you're in the group, like you're in perfect alignment? Like there are there moments where I, I never look for that. But there are times in which I experience like like absolute love for my friend here. I, I, that I can experience. Um, I have children and grandchildren, of which I do the cleaning because I want to make sure that I'm not attached to them in any, any way, so that they can get the information directly from the from the divinity, not from me. So I'm just cut, 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 cut all the time, and occasionally. I, when I get a call from my, my, my children, my two daughters, I have two daughters, 30 plus, um, I can feel love for them. Yeah. When you say cut, are you talking about cutting out the cords? Yeah, cut, I'm talking about erasing memories in me that I experience them as quotes, judging them, how come they don't do this way, they don't do that, and all that. Yeah. 
and they're beautiful, my children are. Um, are beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, but my responsibility for them is to is to set them free from any grasp that I have on them, which is memory, like trying to grab them. Would that include loving memories? A memory is a memory. So it's a dead memory. There's no such thing as as a, a good memory. So to set them free from memories would be not to remember any of the past that you've ever had together, or to to at some point to see them as gods. Now you say or yeah. Be they're mutually exclusive. Oh, of course, because if I if I have if I have, and you know, I I'm going to be cleaning with them to to the day I die. It's just the way it is. I mean, they're there. I experience them, and I want to make sure I'm just cutting these ties so that they get the information directly from the divinity, not from me. Mm -hmm. So, am I sure? Um, I'm never sure. I, I don't know that well. I just keep cleaning and cleaning. Yeah. You, you speak, or maybe it's Joe that references the experience of wonder and the importance of the experience of wonder. Could you talk a little more about I, that? I'm more, I'm more interested in the experience of freedom. More yeah. than wonder. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because that question brings up, there was a chap, they called himself a chap, yes. in Australia. Who, who I was giving, I gave a lecture, and he kept saying, now, wait a minute, you mean you don't want us to be curious? That's his comeback. I said, well, to be at, to be at zero, you can be in awe, but if you want to take curiosity instead of awe, be my guest. Yeah. It's hard to, to put things down um, only because um, I I am I'm never certain if I'm inspired or not, and yeah. I and to be on to be very honest, I don't care. I'm just doing the cleaning, just not stop. Yeah. So I don't have any intentions to. For example, um, people will call me. I used to do these things. I don't do anymore. Um, like um, there's a young man in Hawaii who um, he's having a very difficult tr um, coat. His mother is saying he has very he's having a difficult time. People don't like him, he's not doing well at school and so as I'm reading the email, I'm doing the cleaning. What's going on in me? This is this is showing up. And then she asked um, how to how to help him and I had a reminder, you're not helping him. It's only about you. What's going on in you that you're experiencing that way? And Do you take individual clients? I I used to maybe 20 years ago, but, but I don't no. do that anymore. Yeah. Better that they should learn how to do it on their own, huh? Put us out of business so yeah. we can be vacationing here in Monterey <laughs> instead of trading around the world. Yeah. I'm curious um, what in you is uh, creating your commitment to such a rigorous teaching schedule? Somebody asked me that, but they asked me in a different way. This is the way they asked me. They asked me, "How did you come? Uh, how did you? How did you come around to doing this?" And I said, "I don't know. Uh, life is a mystery, and I just happen to be here in this moment. And there are all the forces, and I have no idea how these forces brought me here. Uh, but I, I'm clear. I'm clear, though. I'm here to clean with you, you chair the board." Uh, this guy, the camera, the, <laughs> that thing is going to get on the internet, going to get on, going to get on shows, and the shows are all generated by oil. You know that, right? Do you have a cell phone? Yes. Yeah. You, you know what the source, the power of that cell phone is? Oil. Without the oil, that you, you, you guys wouldn't have any. Couldn't generate a cell phone message. Mm -hmm. All of that, so I'm cleaning with that. The rape of Mother Earth, I know. Or, or raping Mother Earth, and but we can't help it. So I'm. I have to remind myself. Nobody can help it. Everybody's stuck in programs, and mm -hmm. so somebody's got to get to the cleaning. And I'm willing to do it. Uh, Marvin's willing to do it. 
more and more people around the world are willing to do it. And go. Do you have, um, I guess the answer I was looking to to that last question is, I, I had in mind the possibility that you had the hope that many people would be doing this work and that we might change the uh, uh, If nobody showed up, I would do it anyway. But would it not be your hope? Or maybe you don't hope? Don't you think that's a form of manipulation? I've thought that. Well, I'm, I can erase that then. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if you're not, I, I can work on that. I, 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 I want to get to zero uh, so that, that the people who, who are divinely correct to come will come. Right. Uh, that's mine. I'm not... I'm not here to promote anything. I'm not, at least I'm not. I'm not intending to do it. I'm not conscious. I'm doing it. I may be, but I. I, I think it's a. It's a disservice to people to promote something and then have them come when, when, for them divinely is not correct to to be wherever they they end up being. You know. In other words, prom promotion speaks to their memories yeah. and stimulates their memories yeah. but can promotion also speak to them as and, and stir them to want to erase their if, 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 if I clean let's say I clean in seven there are eight billion people out there if I clean and I get myself back to zero even for an instant everybody will get back to zero then it's the divine in them that will, will choose to, to do it or not to do it. Not, not some promotion on my part, or some manipulation on my part. Yeah. And the book that Joe wrote about you or with you, yeah. is, is that a manipulation? Is that, how do you see the book? Yeah. Well, it depends on what page you're on. Uh. <laughs> Depends oh, on what they, How do you feel they, 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 Well, but I cleaned before, so like with you, um, he had asked me months and months and months if I would do a book with him, and I, I, I did the cleaning, I heard no, 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 just like with you guys, mm -hmm. and at some point I heard yes, and so I did. Now, I'm responsible for every point and every letter in the book, so... There are people who will ask me certain things, and uh, have, having not read all of the book myself, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I, I, my, my own sense, um, he, he did. I, he, he's a nice guy, mm -hmm. and and so I, he shows up for me to clean, and I clean, and I heard do it. And so sometimes somebody will ask me, like you asked me, well, what does Joe Vitale think about it? I said, you'll have to talk to Buddha or do that. I, I can't speak for him. If we have a subconscious, yeah. then that's where memories are stored. And yeah. when people say it's the physical body that is the subconscious, yeah. what about a chair? What about um, what we would na maybe call an inanimate object that does not have a subconscious? Yeah. Where does it store its memories? It does have a this, this thing is a lie. This thing is telling me who sat here. All the people who sat here. This thing is telling me where the where the material came from. It's, it's, t it's talking to me, and it's just talking. I'm just doing the cleaning. Um, so this chair, like you, has the three selves. It has the has the superconscious, conscious, and subconscious. So it isn't. There's no such thing as an inanimate object. If, for example, you can talk to the camera. You can say to the camera, how many cameras do you have, um, Alec? So you can say to the camera, well, we're going to we're gonna take this guy, uh, Hugh Len, so can you, well, what do you think about that? You can talk to the camera, and the camera will tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I don't know about that. And then, then let's say he knew how to do the cleaning. They said, well, let's, let's do the cleaning. And so he does the cleaning, and maybe the camera will change his mind. So when photographers say the camera loves you, they're speaking uh, more than they know. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Even I had a... We, uh, to show you how, how goofy this thing can be, I had a, a friend of mine who 
married a guy who wasn't doing very well in the in the in the construction business, and then went like forty thousand he made, and then maybe three years later after she married him, he he made three million. But she she knew that her job was to to work on all of the projects, talk to all of the projects. And so one day he was having trouble, I think, putting up a scaffold or something. And so she did the cleaning and she heard the nails. She heard the nails and said, we, we just can't get along. <laughs> <laughs> can't get along. So if you can't get nails to even get along, then you can't put up a scaffold, you know. Then the scaffold won't work. So the idea is you have to be able to talk to everything. Get them ready, like little children. You have to say, okay, here we're starting a new project. Here's the address. Here, and then you you begin the pro you begin the cleaning right away, and then the right subcontractors will show up. I mean, the, and the, the right banking will show up. The right whatever. But it, everything is alive. And so everything has the three selves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen the kind of. Um process happen that you're describing where everything just drops into alignment with the plan. But um, uh, how is it, uh, would you encourage everyone to learn to have the facility that you have of talking to furniture and talking to a plan and talking to all the forces well, that go into making well, something work? I, I, whoever shows up over the weekend and at this lecture, I'm going to is that talk what about that. About? Yeah, but I'm not going to get real the rest of the world. So come on, come on, I have something I'm going to tell you about this. You, you could really use. That, that's, um, that's an imposition. It's not a gift. It's an imposition. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. My job is to is to do my cleaning, and and then if I'm if I do my cleaning, get back to zero, everybody will get back to zero. Uh, I'm, that's my that's the only purpose I'm here. And then people show up because they would like to. However, they've heard it and they would like to know more. I'm willing to do that. Because I can get more people to clean, then I, I'm going to have more enlightenment, huh? Great. <laughs> as, as opposed to my, my light bulb. Huh? <laughs> my children say, Dad, your light's out. <laughs> but thank you. Are there certain activities that you engage in in life that help you to get to zero more than others? Yeah, like eating, the, eating clean foods, drinking liquids that are cleaning, um, Plants, having plants in your in your environment that clean, of course. Yeah. Yeah. When you are doing uh, cleaning, are you going into an altered state of consciousness? No. You're just uh, doing it from your conscious mind and trusting that. Well, I'm I'm hoping I'm I'm doing it consciously, but I'm hoping I've talked to my subconscious, who is a computer bank, that that the subconscious has been has heard me enough. I've fallen in love with it. And I've said, has asked it, please help me with the cleaning. And so I've, I've downloaded every information that I know about the cleaning, and so my subconscious knows it, and it will do the cleaning. Mm. So Are there any guides or angels that help one with cleaning? If you eat blueberries, for example, blueberries erase memories and open up angelic kingdoms. Uh, yeah. Could you speak to us a little about angelic kingdoms? Um, what would you like to know? <laughs> um, are there levels to them? Do they interact with humans? I don't know those things. I, I, don't, I don't go that route. All I know is one day I was cleaning years ago and um, the man said, why don't you try blueberries? I said, okay. <laughs> and I said, well, what do you say? I said, well, I could see the angelic kingdom. And, and then that was it. The discussion ended. I didn't hear whether they were levels and they stretched out. And I didn't hear do you mean like nature spirits when you speak of angels? I don't know what that is. Like li they, people say that there are little people that are guardians of plants and the and the earth. No, I'm talking about angelic kingdom. Other other universes, other dimensions that open up, stretch open. So you, eat, you eat one blueberry, just just stretches, and your mind goes, wow. Yeah, and you may not be conscious of it. That's the 11 million for which you're not conscious. 
And it's different with blackberries than blueberries. Uh, I don't know about blackberries. I know blueberries. I know strawberries. Those things. Strawberries, for example, deal with women's hatred for men. Lots there, you know. That's right. <laughs> I, I, <really> <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about that. Why don't you tell us a little bit about women's hatred for men? Well, well I, I'm going to go back to a story, and the story is probably... Um, they have similar stories across cultures. So anyway, um, this is a Los Angeles story. So Divinity said, "Hello, heaven on earth, now you, you, you get you, you get you get this experience." Go, Adam goes, "Yeah." He goes, "Yeah, wow, incredible." And so Divinity then said, "Now you see that tree over there? That's the tree of knowledge. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat that stuff." You see that apple? I wouldn't need it because you don't need it. You're already perfect. Well, maybe zillions of lifetime he says to Adam, come on, we got to eat that because I think he's keeping a secret from us. And then along comes the so-called serpent part of us. Yeah, yeah. So finally, they eat it. <laughs> and then Jesus, or not, sorry, I take that back. God comes along and he, in his long robe and he can hear him squishing. And then he said, he goes, there's a difference in vibration in this. this. And Adam says what? What does Adam say? Adam says, she made me do it. She made me do it. And that's the story of women. Abused neglected but she, but she made me do it and so women end up for example with menopause rage that's, a, that's rage that's the kind of stuff that that can be prevented but that's uh, that's rage and menopause is rage yep so i just throw that in yeah for good measure <laughs> rage prevented by cleaning oh yeah it could it could be worked on but it but you know, it's better to work on it before than wait till towards the end. All of a sudden, this is. Like, oh. You mean the cessation of menses is rage, or the ex the the symptom? Of <laughs> <laughs> it's rage. This this. You're talking about hot flashes and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it's rage. Yes. Yeah, it's rage. It's, 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 it isn't quote natural. It's not a natural state. I can't imagine God would create somebody and say create you and say, I'm going to make you suffer. I can't imagine that. So where did it come from? Well, it came from, she made me do it. So we have a lot of, uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> You got more than a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's women's rage towards men. What about men's rage towards women? Wow, well, but the, the, see, see now you're going, you're, you're moving in a way. The question I would ask if I were a woman, what's going on in me that I can clean this thing up? As opposed to looking at outside and say, why, why did you do that to me? And you should get your act together. Yeah, actually, the uh, sorry, Rick, one of the questions that crosses my mind is, why is it that we have that degree of rage towards each other, yeah, fellow human beings? But you're speaking data. You can, you're engaged. You're, you're, you're wrapping it up as opposed to you can let it go. I love you. Thank you. Whatever you can. I love you. But we, we have an addiction. The addiction is so, so intense. We grab things. How come? Have you ever read Chekhov, the, the Russian um, short talk? He, that's, that's the same in all of his stories. How come? Why? Why did they cut down that forest? Why are they doing that? Why, why is it that we can't get along? Why is it that we, we suffer when if we, if we were friends, everybody would profit from this? Well, the why is it's old data playing and we're stuck in it. And if you grab it like the Greeks do, we're going we're gonna to analyze it. Like I was trained when I got a PhD at the University of Iowa. You're going to grab it and try to make sense of it. You, you, you can't. Eleven million for which you are clueless. And so the idea is Jesus, Moses, all these, all these great sages come along to hello. Let's go. <laughs>
But, so have you set aside your analytical processes? No, I don't, you see, I'm still here. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm still here. If I, if I had left that all go, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here either. If you were going to ask you a really rich question, what question would you ask yourself? Who am I? And how would you answer it? I'm an, I am infinitely zero. I'm, I, I'm, I'm an exact copy of, of the source, the infinite. I'm an exact copy. That means I'm perfect in every way. My problem is not me. My problem is the data in me. Are, are you an individuated perfection? What does that mean? Are we all, are we, do we have any individuated aspects? One more time. Did God create us individually? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so God created you, and your, diff your rhythm is very different from hers. Your rhythm is different from the chair. Yeah. Of course. And so even at zero limits, I still have a rhythm that is unique. Absolutely. To and you have a rhythm for which then you have a certain purpose for which only you can fulfill. And if you don't fulfill it, then we're all stuck. Yeah. But each of us, like Marvin and me, this chair, we've come, we, we have been given the gift of this lifetime to take ourselves back, what Shakespeare says, to thine own self be true. And who are we? We are like an exact likeness of the divine, which is we're zero infinite. That's what we're nothing. My mother used to say that to me when I used to go surfing and come home late. You're nothing, you're nothing. But and now I realize I am nothing. <laughs> she was right all along. <laughs> yeah, mother, you did say right. I always listen to your mother. <laughs> 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 I mean, she was vociferous about that. You're nothing. And, and, and finally, what, I'm 70 and I'm finally going, wow. My mother had bad insight and it took me 70 years to get it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is this, um, I know that this is a revised version of Cole for a poem that you work with, and I'm wondering whether or not um, the method that existed, and, and I have a, a small familiarity with the previous version of Cole for Tell me what the previous version is. My understanding of it is uh, that uh, a group of people would get together if there were misunderstandings among them, and there would be uh, a person standing in as a facilitator, and it would depend upon more, that. More person. like a guard. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the guard would ensure it, that, it, that a process unfolded <laughs> so that people would come yeah. to some kind of understanding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, in in some workshops that I've taken that have been about Huna and uh, there's no such thing as Huna. Oh, there isn't. No, that that's uh, made up by some white person. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, well, I was wondering if if, if uh, in the previous version, the earlier version of Ho'oponopono, before. Um, Hawaii was infiltrated by foreigners. Um, visited by visited by <laughs> foreigners. Yeah. Um, if if you think that perhaps things were different, uh, then uh, well, if a society evolved that was perhaps more enlightened. Listen, if you you look at you look at across the culture, across all the cultures that we have in this this great village called mankind. Um, you will find only two models, and one model is very rare. And that model is, the model is, you got to go talk to a, a guru to get to talk to the divinity, right? Right. Um, this one, you can talk directly. You don't need a guru, you don't need a coach, <laughs> you don't need a master, you don't need any of those. That, you don't even need, if I'm angry with him, I don't need him because the anger is in me. Right. So why would I talk? So... The thing I liked about this when I heard about it um, 20 something years ago was, wow, it's just my own stuff and I can go directly to the many who can erase it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the upon upon that we teach, you're on your own, but you, you got a good coach called God. Yeah. You can talk directly and only that in, only that force in you can erase. 
There's no guru, there's no master, there's no pope, there's nobody can erase. Only the divinity in you can do that. So I'm going to talk to the, why should I go to an in-between? A wholesaler. <laughs> You have a whole team of people, do you not, to do uh, um, the whole Pono Pono work with you? Um, you I'm, know, I'm part of a group of people who who we have developed over over the last 25 or 26 years. Um, some of them are coordinators, like my friend uh, Marvin here, who, who does most of the work. Um, he has to listen to all these telephone calls, and get the emails, and I'm glad I don't have to. That's not my part. I wasn't created for that thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so, and then we have also coordinators uh, who can teach, who, who, so coordinate teach, and then we have people who teach who don't coordinate. And then we have um, key people who are key people because of the cleaning that they have been assigned to do, not because of anything else, but they, they are important people in terms of cleaning. If we can get them involved in the cleaning, we will have an easy result. Yeah, so we have one, two, three, four of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but these people are particularly skilled at cleaning? Not that they're skilled. They're the worst people on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> really? We mean, said, okay, let's get the worst people on the planet to do the cleaning. Wow, I think that's wonderful. Don't you think so? So, we, we, we have the, the biggest troublemakers on, in, the, in, on the, in the cosmos helping with the cleaning. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. So why, you know, the many said, why would I, Jesus came and said, why would I fall in love? be in love with somebody that already loves me. I'm going to go look for somebody who hates me. So, we got a lot of people who are kind of of that category who can, who can clean because that's what they've come to do. Wow. Yeah. That's you suppose she got that? No. <laughs> I, I didn't. Can you share that with us? <laughs> Did you get it? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Share that with us. I don't you. understand. <laughs> that there are people who so want to clean up themselves and they have so much work to do that their cleaning really transforms the planet yeah. because how much they have to clean. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And without their cleaning we would have we, it would take a longer They longer are big time. vacuum cleaners. Yeah. <laughs> Men <-gungus. laughs> And they only showed up over the last thirty years. <laughs> right, Marvin is not one of those he's one of those finite. He has that I can, that, that, I can see that. <laughs> he has one of those French... Um, he swivels, really. <laughs> yeah, he swivels. Yeah. And, but he's very good at the swiveling. Yes. That's no, why I show it up. Mm -hmm. So Marvin, you, we haven't let you get a word in edgewise here. Would you like to share a little bit about your experience in doing Ho'oponopono? Well, um, I don't know where to start, but um, it's something that I'm just very thankful for the divinity to give me as a tool to get back to where I'm supposed to be, to be with God. I, it, it, you know, it, I just, I'm just in awe to have this kind of tool to, to be able or to be able to go back to Him. Basically, it just transforms my life. You know, so yes. used to be I would, for anything that happens, I would look at other people, other than myself, to point a finger to and say, you know, you did it instead of looking at me. Right. So, it just changed, it just changed the whole thing. You know? So, it's just cleaning, it's just, just about cleaning, so that's all I can say. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you. And boy, is there cleaning to do. Oh, uh, that's a <laughs> You know, no matter what you do, there's always that. You know, always you have people who who are signing up, who want to know this or that, and, and you know, I'm glad Marvin got that area covered. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to just show up and do the work. Well, but I get to do my part, which is not easy, yeah. <laughs> because what what you're dealing with is is the addiction for engagement. 
the addiction for engagement, yeah. did you say? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you want to you, you want to wrap your hands yeah. around it. Yeah. You want to get a hold of it. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 the the realization is people cannot help it. Right. So somebody's got to get to the cleaning, and so the idea is that my responsibility, his responsibility. So one of the things that we say to our to the staff in the class: Hello, do your cleaning. Don't be asking any questions. That's a that's engagement. But they're willing to do the cleaning. The, the class usually goes fairly smoothly. Hmm. So, you know, because they can catch areas for which I'm not even conscious of, you know. They can pick it up in there. And how many people we have this weekend, staff? Uh, we have four. Yeah. Including me, five. Yeah. And then cool. my, my kids are volunteers. Yeah. But it's the cleaning that's going to get us through this weekend because if we're doing our cleaning, and they will get the information directly from the source as opposed to getting it from us. Yeah. Lao Tzu once said that to become knowledgeable is to acquire information constantly, but to become wise is to un to let go yeah. of information constantly. Yeah. That would yeah. be similar to yeah. the point. Yeah. So, but the, more importantly, if, if you're at zero, you allow everybody else to be at zero and they get their own information. As opposed to your thinking, you're going to deliver the information. If you if you're coming from, I got the information. I'm going to deliver it to you. You're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. You're you're. It's going to be a long weekend. <laughs> if I'm willing to clean along with the five other people, they will get the room will get what it needs. The chairs will get what it needs. I mean, really, so profound. The floor, the building, like the Sheraton will get it. The land will get it. Um, San Jose, will, uh, this will go out and um, mm -hmm. light up the whole world. Yes. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tough to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was a point in, in Zero Limits where you mentioned, where it is mentioned. Oh, I like that. that uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, that um, that uh, when you were doing cleaning, sometimes you would feel pain in your body. Yeah. And uh, I've been working with... Uh, I love you, I'm sorry, please yeah. forgive me, thank you for, yeah. uh, with a fair bit of dedication, yeah. not as much as you probably, but yeah. for about eight months now, yeah. and I noticed times where I would feel, it felt like I would describe it as an energy knot that would yeah. congeal and harden and intensify in my body, yeah. and as I kept on doing cleaning, yeah. that it would sort of dissipate. Is this a common pattern that you... Um, I think it's different for everybody. Uh, yeah. But that's the thing I love about Philip is that there's no there's no one program for everybody. Everybody is their own program. And so the program is to to really erase the data. To get everybody back to zero. That's and once they get back to zero, they they'll be awed by who they are. They'll fall in love with themselves. They'll be they'll be grateful, but like the word aloha for the Hawaiians. Some Hawaiians, I should be careful. Some Hawaiians, when you say aloha, you're actually saying alo means to be in the presence and ha means God. So I, when, I, when people say aloha, I, you're actually saying I'm in the presence of God. So the whole Ho'oponopono is to be in the presence of God. And you have to recognize that everything is really God made. And if you mess around with them, it's going to come back and swat you. Okay. Best to say, ah... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you um, uh, meditate, Dr. Hulan? Um, I meditate with my eyes open. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are times when I I do meditate, yeah. and there are times when. Uh, you sort of get into uh, a spaciousness sort of state of being where it feels um, very peaceful and open and connected. And I'm just curious if that is a state of being that would be similar to what you're describing. Maybe unique to you. Um, maybe unique to other people. Other people will get it differently. We, we, we will be teaching a meditation process in uh, this weekend's class. But that meditation is about cleaning. So let's say we, we take it through and you sit there and people, there was one lady in 
Australia would say, but what do you focus on? I said, you don't focus on anything. But you got to focus on something. I said, well, be my guess. <laughs> but basically, you go and you do the meditation, so whatever comes up will get cleaned up. As long as you're in that meditation, you, you can bring it to an end. But as long as you're in that meditation, it's a cleaning process. You're sitting there and all kinds of stuff will come up. It's going to get cleaned up. As opposed to sitting there and going, oh my God, do I have to put up with that thought form? And But not to open up all. Open up all. Everything is about cleaning, including the meditation. That's why I love, I love doing it. I, I do it zillions of times a day. Just for that. Like that. Yeah. But I only do it for cleaning. I, wanna, I really want to get back to my original state, yeah, which is purity of heart. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the most important question is, who am I? If you, don't, if you, if you have no idea about that, you'll always suffer. You, you can't get home. You can't get home. I, I mean, that's the most important question in creation. Who am I? Yeah. So the Ho'oponopono is about saying, oh, this is who you are. You're perfect already. The garbage that you're experiencing is not you. Just data. They go, huh? <laughs> and, and then they go, wow, thank God. <laughs> How about guilt, Dr. Hewlin? Data. Yeah. What about, I was, I, I was doing a class with Joe Vitale and something phenomenal happened. Something that I, I was moved by. So towards the end, a, a, a man in the back of the room says, how, how do you, I think, I'm not quite, if I'm doing it correctly, uh, accurately, how do, you, how do you clean with my, if I have the experience of having uh, molested, sexually molested my grand, uh, granddaughter? I went, wow, there it is. That's the truth. Like nobody's business. So I, I had a chance to clean with that. And he did it kind of like, it, up it came, and I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. What are some of the most wonderful experiences that you've had over these thirty years? Probably realizing more and more that this lifetime is really a gift, um, and it's a gift for cleaning. It's a gift of going home. Um, it's taken me years to kind of realize that, that this, that this lifetime is truly a gift um, from the divine. And it's a gift of, to make amends. And I'm, I'm willing to do it. Yeah. I've met some, some interesting people over the years, but I, I would say that probably for me is realizing that this lifetime is, is really a gift and another gift is the cleaning process. Another gift is is um, identity. And then realizing that uh, we are carbon copies of uh, this pure, perfect source. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do yes. You, do you have have experience of? Um, moments or blocks of time where you feel yourself as source? As what? As, as uh, divinity. That, that being in, this, uh, in a state of consciousness, perhaps where you would be merged with your high wow. self, your conscious mind and your high self would uh, open up a window of <laughs> perception. I, I have moments of feeling um, love for myself. I have moments of feeling love for my children. I mean, a kind of love where you have no attachments. That you, you are, I have this experience of experiencing God's love for my children. I've had that experience. I've experienced, I've had the kind of experience of God's love for me. Is it possible that God is the only thing that loves? Oh, that, that absolutely so. So God is love. Everything else is um, a mimic. I've heard it said that love is looking with the eyes of God and yeah. seeing God. Yeah, well, that's what Jesus said. Seek ye first the God. Blessed are the pure in heart. Zero, for they shall see God, but the God in them is seeing God. Yes. And yeah, I've had those 
experience. They've come and gone. Mostly I feel like caught up in data and so which I need to clean. Yeah. When, you, when you travel the world, there's, there, you're, you're always apt to have a lot of garbage come up. Yeah. Like one of the garbage I deal with and I work, I, I clean with it before I show up and I've been cleaning with it for for, um, for almost three decades is this notion that you can you can come to a, a, an appreciation of God by grasp by, by through the grasping process, the engagement process. It can't be done. It can't be done. It's a surrender. Yeah, not not that. For me, it's a letting go. It's a it's taking 100% responsibility to just let go. And it's not easy to let go because the letting go of the the for example, some people will say, well, I'm clean, but I don't get any result. Well, as they're talking to me, I'm cleaning. What would, what would we be cleaning with? Intention. So I'm cleaning with intention. He's, the person is cleaning with a certain intention. Okay? I'm cleaning with, when, he, when people tell me that, I'm cleaning with, God is not a concierge. You don't say to God, I'm going to clean and I want this color, this, but I want it to look like this, and you yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you look young. So I'm, I get to work on that because I didn't realize I had it. And so people will show up in my life if I don't get really stuck in what the hell are they talking about? As opposed to, oh, what's going on in me? That, that, that coming up that I can work on. That's a tough one. Yeah. Does anyone help you clean? What does that mean? Do, do you have someone that, uh, that, oh, that, that either sets uh, an whole environment, space, right? space. I think what what there's there's someone actually there are two or three people that I work with um, that we we do cleaning when things come up. You know, if there are things that, for example, if if a request comes from like I got a request from Singapore, and Singapore uh, there's a banker there that wants us to come. And so um, I do the cleaning, and then I give that information to two or three people, and they can do it. And so we we can we can get the information because we're the baddest guys on the earth. So we <laughs> clean up, and then to see whether it's correct or it yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Not at all. Not at all. I I enjoyed it. I'm I'm grateful. Got a chance to clean, huh? Oh, good. I've heard the questions before. Uh, I'm <laughs> sure you have. Mm. Yeah. Mm.